FMU and the St. Louis Zoo are teaming up today to help a very special kind of feline. To play at its own zoo this weekend, but will fans back the ZOU? Last night, the presidential candidates debated. Today, they move forward on the campaign trail. And Chicago teachers, the union contract is ratified. Mostly cloudy skies will continue this afternoon on what may be the last 70-plus degree day we'll see for at least a week. And open wide, there's a new dentist in this town. KOMU 8 News at noon starts now. From Studio 8A, coverage you can count on in high definition. This is KOMU 8 News at noon. Topping our headlines today, Main Street Bank in Ashland is under investigation. Good afternoon, I'm Angie Bailey. The bank is being investigated for bank fraud and misusing federal money. The lawsuit brought against the bank was filed by former employee Leslie McClellan, who had said she was asked to lie on legal documents. Among the many allegations, former CEO Daryl Woods went around federal regulations and used nearly $400,000 to buy a condo in Florida with money that wasn't his. First Baptist Church members in Stover are now speaking out regarding criminal charges filed against their pastor. Authorities arrested Travis Smith on felony charges from incidents that reportedly happened in Montauk County in 2005. Smith, who is listed online as the church's only pastor, was previously charged with second-degree child molestation and second-degree statutory rape in 2010. Later that year, the felony rape charge was dropped, and in 2011, Smith was acquitted on the child molestation charge. One church member told KOMU the charges presented are not characteristic of Pastor Smith. He's a hard-working man. He's a family man. He works, and that wife of his just gets out and works along with him. They're good people. He's a good family man, and I just cannot see Travis Smith doing anything like that. Smith bonded out of the Montauk County Jail on $20,000 bail. The church will have a fish fry this weekend to show support for him. Well, KOMU dug deeper this morning to figure out if the threat of a strike at Rusk Rehab Center in Columbia is true. We talked to multiple employees and the center's CEO, Bruce Eady. Eady says since the rumored strike, many of his employees told him they're happy with their jobs. He also told us his workers are not a part of a union to organize a strike. Well, the Missouri Tigers are helping save endangered tigers. KOMU 8's Elise Ogioni joins us with a look at the unique partnership between the zoo and the St. Louis Zoo. Angie Truman, the tiger, just added two new felines to his tiger family. Officials at the St. Louis Zoo, as well as officials at MU, announced a sponsorship this morning that will provide the St. Louis Zoo with $100,000 over the next five years to help conserve tigers both at the St. Louis Zoo and in the wild. A new sign was presented this morning to represent the sponsorship. Mike Alden and other zoo officials then took to the bridge to throw painted balls with opponent with excuse me MU opponent logos for the Tigers to play with. Some zoo officials say they see programs like this one as important for the future of Tigers all across the world. The Tigers for Tigers program associated with the St. Louis Zoo will help armor tigers in the wild and will help our scientists here at the St. Louis Zoo and our staff at Big Cat Country um, help preserve endangered species. Now, MU also has partnerships with Tiger Reserves at a zoo in Springfield, as well as the Kansas City Zoo. Officials, officials, excuse me, I spoke with there, say that there are similar programs in the works for both of those reserves. Reporting live from Big Cat Country in St. Louis, Elise Ojoni, KOMU 8 News. Cool project. All right, thanks a lot, Elise. And the Tiger football team, of course, looking for its first SEC win this weekend so far, and so are its opponents, of course. KOMU 8's Morgan Stevens is live in Perot Field to tell us if you still have a chance to watch this weekend's game in person. Tiger and Vanderbilt fans can still snag tickets and nearby hotel rooms when the Tigers host the Commodores at Perot Field this Saturday. Now, Vanderbilt had an almost identical start to the Tigers in conference play, losing to South Carolina and Georgia. When Georgia rolled into town a few weeks ago, it's going to be a lot different than how it is this weekend because there are still hotel rooms and you can still get tickets to this game. Now, you won't be so lucky next week. I spoke to several hotels and they said that most of them are booked completely for the Alabama game and that game is completely sold out. Now, if you're worried about the Tigers' future in the SEC, 
you would just need to look at South Carolina. They joined the conference in 1992 and had a grand total of three conference wins that year, and it didn't have its first division championship until two years ago. Reporting live from Faroe Field, Morgan Stevens, KOMU 8 News. Nice day out there still, but it's changing, isn't it? We're it's changing. In a different direction. A little philosophical question. We want to be positive about change. Of right. Course, How of do you course. feel about change, Angie Bailey? I, I usually am not a big fan of it, especially when it comes to weather. I'm sorry, I know, Rosie. I know. <laughs> We're just going to have to take a big dose of optimism as we head into tomorrow because things are certainly going to be changing across mid-Missouri. First of all, low pressure system directly up to our north is currently at this moment pushing a cold front through the viewing area and that's bringing some rain to uh, the counties directly north of the mid-Missouri viewing area, but not affecting any of our viewing counties yet. Hopefully won't until later this afternoon into the evening, but you can actually see where this cold front is sitting right now across the middle of the mid-Missouri viewing area. A lot of folks dropping even into the 60s, a few upper 50s out there at this time as well. Now here in Columbia, we do still expect to see uh, mid to upper 70 degree temperatures today, but tonight things are going to get real real cool. So let's see the glass is half full. Let's just go ahead and appreciate the fall. And of course, I'll give you all the details on what's happening into this weekend coming up in a little bit. Rosie, sure. Well, the day after the first round of presidential debates, both candidates will be hitting the trail in uh, several swing states. President Obama will stick around in Denver after the debate in order to address a campaign event today. Then he heads to Madison for a campaign rally at the University of Wisconsin campus. Meanwhile, Republican challenger Mitt Romney and running mate all Ryan will head to Central Virginia. They'll host a rally with special guest country music star Trace Atkins. The Chicago's Teachers Union has overwhelmingly ratified a new three-year contract. Union leaders say 79% of members approve the deal, which includes pay increases and a new teacher's evaluation system. The contract has to be approved by the Chicago Board of Education later this month. Last month's a seven-day strike idled a 350,000 students in the nation's third biggest school district. Teachers and support staff suspended the walkout and returned to classes pending the outcome, the official vote on that tentative contract. A wildfire continues to burn in central Washington. It started Tuesday afternoon and it's burned at least 5,500 acres. Ten buildings, including at least two homes, have been destroyed. Residents have been told to leave the area. Firefighters say the fire is burning in an area full of brush that could spread to thousands of acres in the coming days. It contradicts normal thinking. A virus sounds like a bad thing, but it could actually keep your water clean. We'll talk more about that coming up on KOMU News at Noon. Today? No? Nobody's showing up. Today was a doing hair day. I don't know. How long did you like watch and go Just a second, they're talking. Okay, got it. Oh, I'm sorry, Rosie, what? Okay. Um, how often do you watch and go very hair? How often do I what? Will you slide that in my direction? How often do I watch and go dry? About every three days. Okay. Super skanky, but works for me. I and I don't blow dry very often. Just about every day. Huh? I wash my body just about every day. Yeah. But every three days is about my max as far as like hair goes. So yeah. That was this morning. And now I have a, I like must not express this completely correctly. And there's like a kink back here that is driving me crazy. But there is nothing better than like fresh and fluffy hair. That is I, I, for, I usually I go so long I forgot how good it feels to, for my hair to be and clean, then and then it's like, oh wow, I just feel better. And but then, then in the meantime, mm -hmm. in the meantime. Now. 
your live Doppler 8 first alert weather with weathercaster Rosie Newberry. Welcome back, folks. 1210, now the time on your Thursday afternoon. Taking a live look here in Columbia, you can actually see a few outlines of the clouds that we've got here across uh, the Columbia viewing area. Lots of clouds for mid-Missouri, and that's going to be a continued pattern with some rain moving into the mix. So let's head back inside the studio, talk a little bit about what's going on. First of all, our live Doppler rate, first alert radar, a completely clear scan across mid-Missouri right now. The only thing you're seeing out in the sky is a little bit of blue and a lot of cloud cover. However, there is a fair amount of rain, uh, light and moderate amounts of precipitation up directly to our north. Now that really shouldn't affect mid-Missouri. However, we do have rain moving into the area, and that's because this cold front that I've been talking about all week, it's been originating in Canada. It's going to be bringing in some cold, dry Canadian air as we head into the weekend. That is actually sitting right over mid-Missouri at this moment. So behind that, we'll be bringing a fair amount of rain into the forecast for mid-Missouri. Go ahead and take this word away from uh, my forecast right now and our next weather maker. Chilly is what you need to be thinking of as we're heading into this weekend. So I'm liking our current temperature because you can actually see the line of where the cold front is sitting behind everything in the northwestern portion of the viewing area is looking a little bit more blue, a little bit more green, mostly into the 50s and 60s. And as we head further to the southeast, temperatures are warmer into the 70s. And that's where we still plan to top out today here in uh, Columbia. Right around 76 degrees will do it for your high. We could hit that a little bit before the 3 p.m. mark, though. Clouds will certainly be increasing uh, throughout the course of the day. And then as that cold front moves through, things are going to get really cool heading into tonight. So about 10 degrees cooler in the overnight hours this evening. 45 degrees will do it for your overnight low and a good chance of rain moving into the area. About a 50 to 60 percent chance right now. So here's just a look at your precip cast. That rain right now, as I said, doesn't really look like it's going to affect the viewing area. But heading into the later evening hours tonight, looks like we could have a fair amount of precipitation, scattered shower activity moving through mid-Missouri. And then as we head into Friday, it looks like a little bit of clearing, but we're actually going to keep the rain in the forecast for Friday. Friday afternoon into Friday evening as well. Friday's top temperature only going to be at that 50 degree mark, folks. It is a big drop in temperatures, about 25 degrees from today into tomorrow. Saturday, we plan to dry things out a bit. No rain expected right now for game day. However, the live Doppler 8 first alert weather team certainly will keep an eye on that. And otherwise, things look solidly into the 50s before we start to warm up again a little bit next week. So I know the change is going to be drastic. 25 degrees is yeah, a huge drop. That's a big difference. Uh, but at least we're going, we're going to go into it with smiles. I run across a few people said I'm ready for it to feel wintry mm -hmm. and fall. So oh, it I, certainly will. I will be checking with <laughs> them next week to see how it feels now. All right. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Rosie. Sure. Well, hey, we want to let you know about a boil order in effect for some parts of Centralia, and it goes until tomorrow afternoon. Boone County Water and Light are no, were notified of a water main break yesterday. It applies to residents in Barnes, McClay, Dialing, Far West School, Dowell Wallace School, Lost Woods, Olson, and Adams Road. So you'll know them if you live on them near Centralia. Those affected should be boiling any water for five minutes and then turn off all ice makers as well. KOMU 8 News at noon. We'll be back. Okay. This is the C block. I don't have an intro, but we'll wing it.
Stand by. Discuss the latest game this Monday at the Tiger Quarterback Club Luncheon. Visit TigerQBClub.com for more information. Well, so often when you think of virus, you're going to think it's a bad thing, but an Emmy researcher is using a virus to make water cleaner. KOMU 8's Amy Fenton explains why Columbia Water and Light doesn't need the extra step. Probably 30 to 40 a day. Everyone calling to have water problems fixed. Workers in the water distribution system for Columbia want residents to take advantage of the clean water they provide. We've been using chlorine for ever, and to me, there's, there's no better disinfectant around. But there's a better disinfectant. One Missouri researcher, Chang Ho, found it in the form of a virus. Along with chlorine, the bug can clean water. By using a combined method, we have shown that uh, the method it, it can be more effective in removing or killing these pathogens that is still the public concern. Columbia doesn't actually need the virus chlorine combo. Its groundwater is already pretty clean to start. So Colombia is mainly using the groundwater as a drinking water sources. So this kind of water is already very clean, and they just need to only have a, a minor treatment with this quick filtration followed by chlorination. The new approach works better for surface water, which can have other bacteria and slime, making this virus an important part of the treatment process. So for Colombia residents, chlorine is enough. As long as there's chlorine present in the water, chlorine residual. There shouldn't be any. But the new method could make things just as clean in some hard to clean water supplies. Amy Fenton, KOMU 8 News, Columbia. He also said his research goes beyond cleaning water for drinking. It could clean rivers and lakes of dangerous bacteria. KOMU 8 News at noon is going to be right back. And no one's in the hangout yet. I fear we have lost them. And again, you will start down there. Andrew. Yes. And did you hear me? No one's in the hangout. Good morning, Mrs. Oh, Green light. Mike Thor. Yeah. We have any worries. Mike Good afternoon, Mrs. Missouri. Who is making headlines today? Red Pepper Report. Yeah, no, no, no. You had me worried because I had not put out the mic in two weeks. Missouri defensive tackle Sheldon Richardson is well known for making some outlandish comments in this edition of Zavala at the Zoo. KOMU 8's Ashley Zavala tells us how Richardson is now trying to let his play do the talking. Sheldon Richardson returned to Media Day for the first time in more than a month. 
Missouri coaches temporarily banned Richardson from doing media interviews after he said Georgia played old man football, a comment that made national news the week before Missouri played its first ever SEC conference game against the Bulldogs. 10 to the 5 to the house. Touchdown, Georgia. After Missouri's 41 to 20 loss, Richardson approached Georgia head coach Mark Rick. Just told him great game and, and good, great game, good team, and best of luck to you, for real. And, uh, what I, had, what I said was a joke, I took out of a portion, but y'all won, so it didn't matter anyway. Even though coaches silenced his speech for a month, Richardson made plenty of noise with his play on the field. Through five games, Richardson leads SEC defensive linemen in tackles with 33. He's recorded five tackles for loss, two sacks, a pass breakup, and a forced fumble. And Sheldon got his hand right on it. I mean, I, I knew what he was capable of doing before the season started, and uh, it's what I expected of him, nothing less. And <clears throat> I expect more out of him each week. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. He's been doing a good job on defense, you know. He's just coming out fighting hard. And he does that uh, week in and week out. So, you know, he does do a lot of talking. You know, he's very outspoken, but he backs up everything he says. Teammates say Sheldon's outlandish personality is as consistent as his performance at defensive tackle. He's, he's wild. He's kind of crazy. But, um he might not come off as, but he's a real humble guy. I mean, in his personality, but I mean, he, he's a great player and he knows it and he'll let you know it. Richardson admits being outspoken has gotten him into some trouble in the past with Coach Pinkle. Richardson says he's going to try his hardest to keep his outspokenness to a minimum for the rest of the season. In Columbia, Asha Zavala, KMUX Sports. And now for today's red carpet report. Good afternoon, Min Missouri. I'm Sarah Duffy, and here's us making headlines in today's red carpet report. Julianne Moore recently filed a police report claiming $127,000 worth of jewelry was stolen from her Manhattan home. Bracelets, watches, and a necklace were among the items stolen. Moore believes the theft occurred somewhere between June 6th and August 28th. For the first time in nine years, NBC won the first week of the new fall TV season. The network won overall in the ages 18 to 49 demographic, a category generally most coveted by advertisers. NBC jumped ahead thanks to Sunday Night Football and singing competition, The Voice. Also, the premiere of the sci-fi drama, Revolution, was the new talk show of the week. In more NBC news, it's the beginning of the end for a popular comedy. Tina Fey's hit show, 30 Rock, will say farewell after this season. The 14-time Emmy Award-winning show will begin its seventh and final season tonight on NBC. 30 Rock has been on the air for six years and has won an Emmy for Best Comedy three times. Some special guests will help bring the show to a close, including Brian Cranston and Olympic swimmer Ryan Lochte. And I'm Sarah Duffy, and that's that for your Red Carpet Report. At a dentist appointment, uh, your doctor usually will tell you to open wide, though your appointment's probably not quite like our viral video today. Check out Oscar the Raccoon playing dentist with a buddy of his. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Hey, Neater John, there's no hangout wave. Why doesn't anyone ever hear me? Uh huh. Okay, and there's no hangout wave. Roger, tell him there's nobody in the hangout. I've been trying to. Angie's doing her best around here.
30. Did they get that message? I'm hoping, Raj. Welcome back, folks. 12.25, now the time on your Thursday afternoon. Check out how the cold front is moving into mid-Missouri. We've got a 20-degree span of temperatures, folks. 57 degrees up in Chillicothe right now. 77, however, at our capital city. However, the 50s will be the trend as that cold front continues to push from the northwest into the southeast, really cooling things down this afternoon. We still do expect to see mid-70-degree temperatures today with increasing clouds, but as we head into the evening hours tonight, get ready for some rain to be moving into mid-Missouri and could be a good day to break out the winter jackets or at least heavy fall jackets as we head into tomorrow. Top temperatures only around 50. Thanks, Rosie. Some breaking news we want to tell you about right now. Moberly police responded to a shooting on West Lee Street. Officers found a 32-year-old woman who had been shot in the back. She's getting treatment at a hospital in Columbia. The police there in Moberly have taken her, a, su a suspect into custody. Still investigating, of course. KOMU will bring you all the new information as it becomes available. The Tiger football team's looking for its first SEC win this weekend. So are their opponents, of course. Vanderbilt, KOMU 8's Morgan Stevens is live at Perot Field to tell us if you still have a chance to watch this weekend's game in person. Tiger and Vanderbilt fans both still have a shot to see the Tigers take on Vanderbilt in person this Saturday at Perot Field. Now, Vanderbilt has an almost identical SEC record to the Tigers, losing to South Carolina and Georgia. And you're going to see a little different scene than when Georgia was here a few weeks ago because there are actually hotel rooms available and tickets for the game. You won't get so lucky next weekend when Bama rolls into town. That game is sold out and most hotels I talk to are already booked. Morgan, reporting live from Perot Field, Morgan Stevens, KOMU News. And here's what we're following for KOMU 8 News at 5 today. It typically takes doctors six or more weeks to get results back from genetic testing on critically ill babies. But now there's a new way that can get those results back more quickly. Also coming up, there's a new use for Botox if you were looking for one. It may help some embarrassing issues. How many more ways could we possibly <laughs> be using things like Botox? They're telling me something. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to go ahead and talk about what's happening. Yeah, Rosie, update us you know on the what? weather. Just, just shoot it on over to me. I do want to talk about what's happening, folks, because we do have a cold front moving into mid-Missouri. Of course, the conversation always continues on Facebook, Twitter, face-to-face, -face, of course, on our Google Plus as well. But I want to remind you, komu.com slash weather. Go ahead and check out what's happening on our radar and our temperatures since things are going to be getting so It's going to cool. be changing a lot. Some more breaking news for you. Doyle Green Beckham uh, arrested by Columbia Police last night. We're going to bring you more information information on that. We're digging into it, folks. We'll see you then. Sorry, they're like yeah, okay. trying to say names to me and as we're both I, talking. I'm sorry, I'm I like, saw that on Twitter. Yeah, it was like, well, we'll just. Yeah, you well, handled it very well. About GDGB, you know, yeah, you know, Oh, uh-huh. Because he's the, he's the top dog, you know, that everybody. Sure, ma'am. I think it went fine. Thank you. Hey, Craig. Hey, you popped in last second. I'm glad you're here, but now I got to go. You're finished, huh? Oh, well, at least I got to say hi. Yeah, I'm sorry. I do. I have to uh, take a four year old to preschool by oh. one o'clock here, so I apologize. But um, I would love no to problem. hang out and chat with you. So good seeing you. Please do circle back. I'll do it. Take All care. Right. Have a good day.